What's up, it's Austin. I'm back for the second part of our video series where I'm talking about the pop demo that I've created for Cubase 12. If you haven't seen the first part, go check that out. I kind of show you how to navigate the entire session, how I set up my templates, how I set up routing, but we're not focusing on any of that for this video. In this video, we're gonna look at some of the production tools and techniques that I've used during this. So if you wanna follow along, open up your demo project in Cubase 12 and follow along. Let's go ahead, we'll start with some of the drums and kind of how I've produced them and put them together. In the verse, it's actually a super simple pattern. We don't really have anything crazy. We've got a kick, a snare, and then I've layered up a couple claps in different areas and we've got some hi-hats and a crash. Typically when I'm producing a song, uh, what I like to do is I like to kind of get a kick and a snare channel up in Groove Agent. And the reason I'll do that is because I just find it really intuitive to write my drums with MIDI, especially for like kick and snare relation. And then later in the song, if I want to swap out samples, if I want to do weird things with routing and side chaining, it's really easy for me to have all of that split up on a virtual instrument track instead of just dragging and dropping every single kick and snare. And then what I'll do is I'll layer in some additional samples actually on the timeline so I can chop and manipulate those a little bit more specifically. But let's go ahead and take a look at the drums now that I've kind of given you that workflow tip. So for the kick and snare, Everything that you'll hear in this just comes straight out of Cubase 12. They're all stock synths, they're all stock drum samples, uh, all stock preset chains. So you'll find everything in there. For this kick and snare, it sounds a little bit something like And then what I did is I layered that snare with a roomy clap on like every first snare of a section. And that just comes in here and there so it kind of adds a nice little bit of roomy tail. And then I've done something kind of similar where I took another clap and I've just kind of put some delay and some uh, reverb on it. We'll talk about mixing chains in the third video, so I don't want to go over that too, too much. But just so you can kind of hear what this is doing in the actual production. Then we've done some hi-hats here. I love using the sampler track for hi-hats because it will pitch them as you go up and down. And I find that really, really intuitive for hats, especially if you wanna do like trap rolls and things like that. So we have this little hat pattern playing this. And as you can see, what I've did is I've alternated some velocity. So the sampler is velocity sensitive, which is really, really nice. So we've got hard hit, soft hit, 16th notes, nothing super crazy, but it adds a nice little bit of realism. And then I've also added in a hip hop crash right here. So all of the drums throughout the verse sound like this. And then we've kind of kept the pattern really, really similar going through the chorus. The only thing that I like to do in the chorus is I'll typically add some kind of percussion loop up top and some kind of layer to that snare so it can get a little bit beefier. So we've added this big snare layer. And then we've got this little top loop in here. And that's pretty much all that's happening for the drums within this demo. We do have a couple little percussive loop things that are happening throughout. So we've got this little drum fill that happens. And then in this pre-chorus that we have, we introduce a couple more loops. We've got these filling in. So it's basically split up into a tom loop. And then I've put these offset claps to just kind of give us a more unique uh, vibe. And then we've got a ton of different claps and effects going on here. I love using big claps, down hits, stabs, anything like that to kind of bring a section in. And I love using swells and reverses to kind of take us out of a section. So you'll find a lot of those. So there's some cool stuff in there. The only thing that's not pretty much a straight up sample is I printed this out of Halley on Sonic. And it was a really, really, really cool vibe. And then I have this clap right here that's just a pretty standard clap. But I put a ton of reverb on it to kind of give us an impact. We'll talk about that more in the mixing video though. So the main bass in the verses is gonna be the suspense bass out of Halley and Sonic. It's just got a nice little bit of movement. And that also continues throughout the chorus as well. 
but what we're doing is we start to kind of layer the basses as we go. So that's the only thing happening in the verse. And then what we've done for this pre-chorus is we've brought this bad boy in, it's the laser bass, and it sounds a little bit something like this. We've got some filtering happening. And then in the choruses, what I like to do with bass is start to layer things up so we can kind of take up multiple dimensions. So we've got that main bass that we talked about in the verse. And I've taken it up an octave because I have this guy right here, the num bass, taking up most of the low end. And then we've got this little bass up top. It's just a duplicate of that main bass. However, I've added cloner and I've added a little bit of room with revelation and then filtered out a lot of the low end and boosted the top end. So we get something like this. And then I brought in this nice big bass stab. Now for synths, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that we have. We have some DX style keys from Halley and Sonic right here. And those offer a little bit of movement and then they sustain a little bit later in the song to kind of give some variation. We've got a nice little verse pad right here that is. That's just doing a nice little one note drone. And then we've got a very, very cool little arp right here. And what we've got is we've got some automation that's opening that up as we go. So you'll see right here that this cutoff. It's just being automated up as we go to give us a little bit of variation. And then in the second half of this verse, we have this nice little back pad that comes in. The whitewash preset sounds great. It's got a nice little bit of that analog warble. And then into this pre-chorus, we're stripping it down a little bit, the DX keys, the verse pad, and the verse ARP, and then we've got these pre-chorus leads coming. We've got the Almighty preset right here, and then we've actually got this cool little cast iron piano that is straight out of Verve, which is one of the new instruments in Holly and Sonic, and this thing sounds so, so good. It sounds a little bit something like this. And that's also just being automated up with a filter. And then in the chorus, we've got all of that happening. And we've also got a couple different synth leads. So we have this big analog brass right here, straight out of Allian's Halley and Sonic. Such a good synth and such a great preset for that. Just filled in the space immediately. Not much was needed. And then we have this nice little spacey lead that sounds a little bit something like this. Super distorted, super crushed. Pad Shop is really underrated for uh, using like weird little like granular leads and stuff like that. It's also amazing for pads, which is what it was clearly made for. However, I think that you can get a lot of cool things out of that. And then we ended up doing that same lead, but with a different patch for the left and a different patch for the right. So on the left side, we have this. And that's where the clear sentiment pad. And then we have the right side that's got the saw octave. And then we've got a little accent melody up here, up top with Pad Shop waving goodbye. And then for the big post chorus, we bring it in with one more brass to kind of thicken everything up with the San Jose. Just adding a nice little bit of top end sheen. And then we're layering that lead up one more time with the smack hook preset, just to give us some extra buzz. We've got some guitars that happen throughout. So these were actually tracked by myself so you can find the stems in the session. Um, so this just sounds like this with nothing on it. And 
and I'm just doing some processing with the amp rack and frequency to kind of get some of the um, muddy low end out. And then we've got That's it for all the instrumental. Then we've got a vocal. What I ended up doing is one lead vocal for the verse with a couple little delay throws. Sounds a little bit something like this. Again, all stock preset. In a couple weeks since you've been home. I'm getting used to being all alone. And what I'll do for the delay throws is just copy the vocal chain and then throw on a delay at 100% wet and throw on a reverb at maybe like 50% wet and then filter out some of the top end and some of the low end. So we get a little bit something that sounds like this. Minute. Thought you would come back, but you didn't. I know. I'm and to me, that just adds a nice little bit of movement and character. And then we've got these really kind of crushed vocals in this pre-chorus. We've got the same thing, but what I did is I highlighted it and then duplicated it, took it down an octave with pitch correct, and then spread it out with cloner. <laughs> And then in the chorus, we've got a whole big vocal stack. So here we've got the lead vocal in the center. I don't wanna give this up, oh no. Never meant to let you down. And then we've got a left take and a right take of that. I don't wanna give this up, oh no. We've got some falsetto harmonies. I don't wanna give this up, oh no. Never meant to let you down. We've got that artificial low vocal and some uh, delay throws in there. We've got this cool little high response vocal. So what I did for this is took pitch correct, took it up an entire octave, and then processed it with some stereo delay, some revelation, and the effects modulator. We can talk about this one a little bit later in the mix video, but it has this really cool vibe. Be now, everything I touch just turns to and then we go into these vocal chops for the post chorus. So these just sound a little bit something like this. Hey. So I manually chopped my own vocal and then threw on a big chain. And so for the full production, you get this nice big polished pop track. And that is pretty much all of the production stuff that we threw in this. And if you follow me to video number three, I'll talk a little bit about some of the mixing chains and some of the processing, because there is quite a bit happening on a lot of these different things. So let's go check that out. Yeah.